welcome welcome it's saturday it's our saturday sew along yay saturday yay sew along happy to have you all here and this is going to be fun we're going to do today bailey's cowl tank and wrap it's pattern number 320 it's brand new for the fall 2020 and i think when i saw this concept and what i wanted why i wanted to put it together is these pieces are probably the most versatile of anything you'll see they're you really can do them in knit you can do them in woven you can do them i don't think there's a limit to fabrics that you can really do this to you want the cowl to be you know a fabric that would look pretty hanging soft i saw a cowl the other day in the store and it was a plaid cowl and it just looks so bad so but you know they're out there and you get to do what you want and that's the beauty of sewing you get to decide what you like um, but anyway, I think it's a really versatile pattern. As far as fit goes, I just don't think you're going to have a lot of fit issues. Um, I've really incorporated a lot of little secrets in the pattern. I think it's going to be fun. So let's get sewing. We're going to make both the wrap and the cowl tank. We're going to make both of them. And as we go along, you all can just ask questions. Okay, I'm going to, I think the biggest thing that we gain from these, I think, is really just confidence that you know, maybe you don't have to read the directions quite as close or you get some options or, you know, things like that. But I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, as I look at the pieces, I'll kind of explain them to you a little bit. This is um, piece number two is where we start. So we'll start with our first. We have the guide sheet here and we'll put that up. Um, page number one. It's not the first page of your guide. It's the first page of your instructions, the first column of your instructions, because, you know, we don't need the rest of it up there. And so it hangs, I, I'm going to mark just the center of it because I'm going to want the center of it to know where the shoulder seam is here in a minute. So I just, before I unfold it, I just mark it at that point. Um, you've got it, it's cut on a fold. I'm using fabrics. They're on the bottom of your screen. The fabrics I chose, I chose because they're coordinating in this particular case. There are so many fabrics that could work on this and they don't need to be coordinating. They, you know, you can have a tank and the outside could be something totally different. I just have always loved these two fabrics. It's 3501 and 3502. So I used 3501 is the smaller check and I used it for the t cowl and I put it on a bias. And then 3502 is larger. It's like I said, coordinating and I use that for the wrap. All right, so I've marked the top. What this piece is going to be is it's, um, it's actually the top of the shoulder is how it sews in and so what you're going to do is finish off the edges one thing i did notice about this fabric you guys is you could you could do it without any finish at all it's a velvet it's, it's a stretch velvet it's really pretty but way this is put together is a little unusual in that it's finished and then sewn together and I'll kind of explain that as we go along a lot of sewing done we're staying home and staying safe and that's all good for us so after I finish that edge and again I'm following the instructions I'm going to go to the sewing machine I'm just going to turn up 3 eighths of an inch no more because it's a curved edge if I turn up more then you know I'll get I'll get issues with it actually kind of buckling a little bit if you're more comfortable you could press it before you stitch it you could just press up that seam allowance but I'm gonna go ahead and just sew it my thread is caught around my foot Good. 
take this out. I don't know what's going on, but something, my machine's not happy with something. Let me just take this out for a second, and I'll put it back in. Make sure we're in the right place. I think that, for whatever reason, my thread got wrapped around. Okay, it's stitching beautifully. All right, we'll just start again here. On the pattern, does the cape say... On the pattern, the cape says large is 41. Does it mean 51? Not if it says 41. The cape says large is 41. Oh, it does mean 51, you guys. It sure does. Yep, yep, yep. You can't go from 46, yep. Yep, thank you. We'll fix that. Thank you. I appreciate y'all letting me know. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, and keep in mind when you're choosing your size for that, um, that cape is worn open. So you don't, you don't want it to close. You don't need it to like be equal to your bust. You want it to be a little bit smaller then. So that's, you're just going all the way around. It's the outside. Let me kind of show you where I'm at. So this is where it's the sleeve. And so that you're kind of finishing things so that once you put it together, it'll actually, there's no, the, all the hemming and stuff will be done. So just the way this assembly is, is done like that. So I'm going to do that one. And then I'm going to do this one. All right. My machine, for some reason, is slowing me down. I'm not sure why. Because I'm trying to go fast. That's better. I have been sewing a lot the last few days. I'm working on the new patterns. And could be that it's tired. Or maybe it doesn't want to work today. I got an email. Do you guys give your sewing machine a name? I got an email from a customer. And she gave her sewing machine a name. I thought that was a good one. that pattern um, of serging the edge and turning it up on, on that. So then what you're going to do, the next step, is you're actually going to do that to piece number, um, let's see where we are, piece number one, three, and four. One, three, and four. So um, four is the side panel. And I just kind of pin them together so I don't lose track of which, which ones they are. I'm going to serge the top and the bottom. And then 
I'm going to hem the top and the bottom. So all of this is kind of just prepping it, if that's fair. You're just kind of prepping this to sew it. All right, so after I um, finish the edge, I'm going to hem it. And again, all of these hems are just a 3 8 they're all small. And again, I've, I've got these pieces together. I just pinned them together because when they're pinned together, they just take a little less time to manipulate. Done. I'm a thread cutter, as you can tell. I hate loose threads everywhere. Okay. And turn this one under too. Remember, all of these seams are going to be. Not really remember. I guess I haven't told you. But if you'll think about it, all of these seams are going to be overstitched by another seam. So it's not like I have to backstitch at the ends. It takes a lot of time and it's going to be overstitched. So it's, I would recommend you not do it. Just clip the thread there. You're not going to have any tension on it. You're going to overstitch this here in a little bit. And it's going to be overstitched with a serger. And even if you're not overstitching with a serger, you're going to overstitch with a sewing machine and you could backstitch then. So this really isn't the time that you need to backstitch at all. Those, those um, ends will keep themselves well taken care of. All right, and then I have my front. You can see there's my front there. And just so that you recognize the pieces, uh, the longer edge there is the front. It kind of hangs down in the front. So when you're, I always think it's good to kind of orientate the pieces when you're looking at them. Because sometimes once you get to the sewing machine, when everything's laying flat, it can be a little confusing, especially if you don't have the, t the pieces right there. So the longer edge is at the front. There's a little notch there, which is where the side panel joins in. So that's how you can tell the difference there. And where I'm going to finish the edge is the bottom. So it's down, it's the hem. So again, I think that if I just pin these together, I don't have to reorientate them every time I go to do something. I think it's a little easier. So we're, where we're at, we're at the very first column of the sewing, but we're at the bottom of that column. This is actually the hem of the wrap. Okay, and then once I've surged it, I'm going to hem it. All right, are there going to be more velvets? Yes. I'm going to try this afternoon. I've got an event I've got to go to here right after I get done with this. And I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to try. I've got a beautiful navy blue velvet that I'm going to try to get up for tomorrow. It's really, really pretty. And I've got some denim velvets. probably not attached or plugged in all the way. It's just not going very fast, but that's okay. It'll slow me down a little bit. All right, so the bottom surge, turn, and then just top stitch. So you guys, on this particular fabric, it's a real compromise because, you know, I love darker fabrics, especially in the wintertime. Oh, that's not probably true, but I like to use the fabric that's really the best for the garment that I'm making. And sometimes if it's dark, I ignore that and then you all get all upset because you can't see. 
the this was the fabric I really wanted to use, but it's really beautiful. It's like got a mesh, um, a beige mesh background to it. So it's one color on one side and one color on the other, so we both get what we want. You get to see and I get to use the fabric I like. Okay, you're okay in questions? So that's that. This is not really hard or this takes you a while. Alright, so there's the front. And now you see that those those bottom edges are hemmed. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the back. The front on this particular case, I'll, I'll show it to you in a little bit. I actually cut that on a bias. The back I didn't, but the front, and it was really just to save fabric. And it, it just didn't make that much difference because it's kind of angular anyway. So I will say one thing about this wrap is because of the sleeves, it definitely eats up a lot of fabric. So again, as we're on the back and we're hemming it, we're actually hemming it before we sew it. Isn't that fun? And we won't have to worry about whether we decide to hem it or not. It's going to be all done. to actually move on to column number two. Yay. I feel like we graduated. Okay, so what you're going to do here is you're going to make sure that the back is up and the front is up and you're going to stitch the shoulder seams. So that's where it's really important not to flip the piece and know that this is the front. I'm going to take the pin out because I don't really need that anymore. So the longer edge is the front and then you're going to stitch it to your shoulder. Right sides together, and I'm going to serge that. And then you're going to repeat it for the other side. Just make sure you've got it the right way. Then what you're going to do is you're actually going to finish off the front edge. So you can see here it is. And the front edge is all the way around this portion. Remember the bottom is already hemmed, but you're going to just serve it and finish it. from the top side so that you can make sure you tuck your serge previous seams, your shoulder seams. Uh, shoulder seams should go to the back. Shoulder seams should press to the back. So if you're stitching on the wrong side of the fabric, it's a little bit hard to get the shoulder seams to go the direction they have, whereas if you're 
surging from the top right side of the fabric, that's a much easier process. All right, so now we're going to hem the front. I'm just going to start at the bottom. Because this is a finished edge, this is where your back stitch. There's nothing else that's going to come along and sew over this. It's finished. So I'm going to back stitch right there. And then because I've back stitched, I can just clip those threads. Okay, questions. Is the is it penny velvet? I don't know what penny velvet is. Oh, the navy velvet? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just navy velvet. It's a poly. Most velvets, most velvets today are poly. The, all velvets used to be cotton before, and it's what made them miserable to work with. But now they're, they're easy to press. They're throw in the wash, throw in the dry. They're really nice. They're very nice. Um, what is denim velvet? It's just a, a denim that has velvet throughout. It's kind of embossed with velvet. Really pretty. But remember this this little wrap doesn't really need any drape. I mean it, it just it's got great drape as it is and the sleeves the way they're cut, they already have a little bias ruffle to them. So just so many different fabrics will work well in this. You may like other fabric. You know, you may like some better than others, but they'll all work well. Will your navy velvet have coordinating fabrics to go with this pattern? Yes, we've got some beautiful silks. Beautiful. It's Max Mara. It's really pretty. Yes. I shouldn't tell you all that. Because then if I don't get them up. All right, so I'm just nearing the bottom. And just, I'm going to, I wonder, can they see, how well can they see on that little camera? Can they see really well on that little camera? Okay, so I'm just basically going to take, if you just fold in 3 8 the little folded edge will go below the hem on the bottom. So you're literally just going to make a little, kind of like a little mitered corner. It doesn't have to be stitched. It will fold up just because it, it is stitched. But just fold it up, back stitch it, and you're good to go. Just the very fact that it will be pressed and then ironed, it will stay up in place. But if you don't, kind of tuck that corner underneath a little bit, it'll have a tendency to to show or the other thing you can do is go less than a 3 8 inch seam allowance if you go to like a quarter inch seam allowance it won't show and you can do that also okay so i've got that done do you ever stay tape the shoulders no no because if the shoulders it's an illogical process to me because if the fabric itself won't hold up why would stay tape in only one location work why wouldn't you stay tape the side seams and the front, you know, to me, it, the fabric is either stable or not. And if it's not, then I wouldn't use it at all. Okay, so we've got the neck edge finished, right? We've got the whole front neck edge. And you guys, you kind of probably know me by now if you've watched before. There's no reason to, to press this. I mean, you know, you can if you want to. But there's, the only time I will all press is when it's necessary to go to the next part. Otherwise, sometimes you're just pressing to press and what happens is it just gets wrinkled again as you're sewing with it. So I'm not gonna press any of this because it's, it's just not necessary. For this next step, now also what I do when I'm surging, which I'm going to be surging for this next step, I'll put a pin at the shoulder seam to make sure that the shoulder seam is going backwards because once you get it to that particular point and you're on the serger, it's hard to tell which way the seam should go. If you press, you can, but even if you press sometimes, it's hard to tell which way the seam should go. So I put a pin there so that I know the direction that it's going. It's already the right place at the shoulder seam, at the neckline, it's just the shoulder edge where I put that pin, okay? 
Okay, so let's get the big picture and then we're gonna come backwards. And I'm gonna do this a little bit different in the guide just because I think it'll help you understand it. Um, you'll wanna do it like the guide eventually because the guide saves you a step is what it does. Okay, so here's the front. Let's kind of put this up like this. Here's the front. And I'm gonna say, if you can call it, that's the side seam. So the sleeves come in. I guess you could call them sleeves. They're it's a pretty loose definition of the bell, whatever you wanna call it. And they sew in like that. But in between this side seam comes in this side panel. Okay, I'm gonna unpin those now. So there's a little side panel that comes in between the front and the back. The front doesn't sew to the back, it sews to a side panel, okay? So the guide sheets have you showing that all is one, and it's very easy to do. I'm not going to this time. I'm actually going to sew on the sleeve, and I remember I've got a pin here, and the pin lines up to the shoulder seam, and so I'm gonna sew that on, and then I'm gonna come back and sew on the side panel, just so that it helps you understand how the side panel goes. Again, though, like the first time making it, I'll probably maybe do it this way, and then you can kind of understand that guide a little bit better as to how that side panel slips in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to align the hems. And remember, they're, they're already finished. So I'm just gonna stitch front to back. And because, again, there's, there's no easing on this, but there is a shoulder seam. I'm gonna make sure the shoulder seam is either face down again so it's easier to serge over, or else it's going the direction that I'm sewing so I, can, I don't have to even worry about it. Okay, when you're sewing and you're starting those two edges on a serger and they need to be exact, lift up your foot, push them all the way to the needle, and that way it won't take one layer without another. It'll take both layers at the same time and it's a little easier to do it that way. I don't think you need to pin this. I think what you need to do is just project ahead and I can see my midpoint and my shoulder seam. So I'm gonna make sure those are sewing together. And don't run over your pins. It's never good on a serger to run over your pins. The serger never wins. Okay, and then once you get to that point, again, just look ahead and project down to the bottom. That way it'll just help you ease your pieces in. So there we have it, it's the front, and it's the bell, and then right between the front and the back on these seams right here, this is where this piece sews in. So what I'm gonna do is actually sew it in now. And I'll just sew it separate, and I'm just sewing over those same seams, only for the, the width of what this is. Again, they're all finished at the bottom, and so, um, I'm just lining them all up and I'm re-surging over those areas and I'll show this to you after, we, after I do it. By doing it like this, you're laying in a little heavier of serger thread because you're, you're putting in another layer of serger thread, but I think it's... I think for right now, for sewing it, it makes it a little bit easier for you to understand. Okay, so here we go. Here's the sleeve again. And here's the side panel right there. And that side panel sews both to the front and to the back. And it doesn't really matter which way you do it and which way you put the side panel because it's going to be covered by the sleeve anyway so it's just not going to make a difference and lift this up push that all the way to the needle 
That way it'll it'll pull it in evenly. Okay. Got the other side to do, but we're almost done with this wrap. Look how pretty I love this thing. I just love this wrap. See, so when you open that up, there's the side, the little side panel. And that gives us wrap dimension. I've seen lots of flat wraps, and I like, I like this one so much more because it gave it the dimension that, it, that I liked. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side the same way. I'm just going to sew on the sleeve. We'll start there. And let me answer questions. It looks like you're hemming with a straight stitch. Is there enough give for a stretch fabric? Yeah, I think that's kind of a misnomer, you guys, where we think we have to, I don't know, the sewing machine companies have said you have to sew with a straight, you know, you just don't have to. You just don't have to, so don't worry about it. Peggy, when the model was wearing the wrap, it didn't look stable and it moved toward the front. Is there something to do to add weight to the back to make it more stable? No, I, honestly, it's that fabric right there, and that fabric is so, you know, look, I, it's, the, it's a peachy fabric. It was just really, really thin and really, really light. So I used it because I liked the color and I wanted the color, but it's just, it's the fabric. It's not the, it's just not a problem with the actual garment itself. It, I've worn this and it hasn't moved a bit on me. So that's, it's got a shoulder seam and it's got a really nice stability. So I, I definitely wouldn't worry about it. I lost my pen, you guys. I need my pins. Okay. So I'm just sewing the sleeve all the way to the side and front. So the main reason I really chose this as a sew along is I wanted you to understand how to do that side panel, that little side piece. So you can see here, I'm thinking I'm just going to put it on this mannequin. Let's, let's go to this mannequin. I haven't sewn the side piece in, but I think you'll understand it a little bit more if I put it on the mannequin without the side piece. I just want to make sure you understand this because the sewing itself is really easy and it's an adorable little wrap. Okay, so let's put it here. Okay, and the inside is, is light, so you'll be able to see it. Okay, so my side panel, little piece, is right under here. So if she had an arm, the arm comes out right here, there's the shoulder seam. And you can see where that is. Can I see that? Okay. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. So see, that hangs there and your arms come out here. So let's go on this side where I haven't sewn the side panel. And I think what I might do is just pin it in place so you can kind of see where it goes. I don't even know if I need to sew it for y'all. So the side panel is what joins this. And this is really what does make it stable. It goes here to the seam where the front and back have been sewn, I mean to where the sleeve and the front have been sewn. And it's again, it's all even at the hem. I'm going to put that up so you can see. And this was the seam I was talking about, that it doesn't really matter if it shows or not because it's underneath. So whether you put it on this side and go this way with it or the other side, it doesn't make any difference. Then this goes under the arm, and this is going to sew to this piece. 
And again, whether you put it like that and sew it together or whether you put it like this, it's just not going to make any difference. That seam's not going to show anyway. Because the sleeve, the bell of that sleeve covers it up. Okay, and I'm one pin short. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of what holds it underneath your arm there. And it goes underneath the bell and then the bell hangs over. And see how pretty it is. The back of the cape comes down and it's kind of full. It's just so beautiful. I just love it. And then the front is just um, kind of a little, just a little asymmetrical front there. Okay, easy enough. This is where the little piece goes in and it holds it under the arm. All right, so that's that. I'm not even going to worry about sewing that. We'll go on to the, to the cowl itself. Okay, do you hem it before joining the sides to the sleeve? Yeah, so that's why really the whole thing is hemmed and then you put it together. That's the only way to do it. It was the way it was done. I can tell from the original how it was put together because you can just tell the order of the stitching. But I actually tried to come in and create a different way and you can't. It, it has to be done the way it's done. And I have a lady that I, she runs a factory, and she's run a factory for a zillion years, but I'm always consulting with her on how things are put together and how things are made and, you know, the order of construction. And she said the same thing. It can't be done another way. There's no other way to do it. So the only thing you have to be careful of is when you're joining the pieces at the bottom that you line them up and don't let them shift. If it's easier for you, do it on the sewing machine and then do it on the serger. You know, precise sewing a lot of times is done on the sewing machine. And then to me, the serger is almost big picture, but you can, you know, you can easily do both. But I just love that. The way it's draping is so pretty. It's everything I wanted it to. Let's go back to this for just one half a second. You can see, this is why when I said I cut the front on the bias, you can see that it, it, it didn't matter because it was such an angular cut piece anyway. And then I didn't do this because they are so full, they kind of give a little bias effect. And then the back, again, because it's full, it gives a little bias effect. So cutting that front, and when I say bias, it's a knit, but all I mean is that you can skew the pieces to give a little different representation of what they are. Isn't that, it's so pretty. I mean, it's just so pretty, I love it. Love it, love it. Very easy to do, obviously, what time it took us maybe 40 minutes to make it. Um, and so I want to make the wrap. Let's make the little tank that goes with it. Because that little tank, I think this tank is a home run. I think it's really a powerful piece. Jackets. I don't, I did not intend it to go with the cowl all the time. I mean, the wrap all the time. I just really wanted you to see what a powerful little piece it was. For me personally, I wear it a lot under wraps, sweaters, jackets, all kinds of things. And it's so beautiful. It's feminine. It's really, really nice. Okay, so let's get that made. Any questions that you want to ask on the wrap portion? I really appreciate you pointing me that out, you guys. I can't believe it. As many eyes as we've had on this pattern, nobody noticed that wrap. Dag nabbit. I hate mistakes. I really do. I think I've become realize there's so many people that have their hands on this pattern that they're just going to happen. Just know that we really appreciate that you let us know and that we will take care of them. Okay, so thanks. Okay, do you ever get a class to keep the front together? Sure, the little bow, like the little cute bow that we did. You could actually, if you were doing out a lighter weight fabric, you could actually tie the front together. I think that would be cute too. Yep, remember my job is to give you the pattern, your guys is to take it to another level. We gotta stay in our lanes here, okay? All right. All right, so let's make this little cow, cow tank. All right, so I've got three pieces. Um, and the way I did this is I built in like a, a shelf in, to the inside. And I did it mainly so you really can wear it without a bra if you can wear clothes without a bra, okay? <laughs> because there's a lot of times where I'm throwing on a cowl and, you know, I just don't want another layer. I just, it can be, work really well for the summer. It can work really well for the winter. So I just felt the pattern itself would hang a little bit better if I did 
um, that lining inside, and so I did. So recognize that the pattern itself is very weird looking. The reason it's weird looking is because it's got a, a liner kind of built into it. Okay, so we are on this third column. Yep. We're on the third column. It's actually the third column of instructions. We have a number just one, two, three, four, five. So we did one, we did two, one and two and, and a half of the wrap, and then we start on the cowl. Everybody okay? All right, let's do it, man. Now when I cut this out, again, this is the smaller coordinated piece to the one I did. And so when I cut it out, I did cut this piece on the bias. And so it's kind of going to look like that is what I envisioned it to look like. Going to have a little bit of a cow. And I don't know, and again, it's a knit, so there's really no bias, but it's a bias look. And I don't know that it really would have made a difference, but what I wanted is a, I wanted it to have an appearance of a little more softness going throughout the whole entire top itself. All right, so that's kind of the look you're going to have. And we're going to start. And so when I did this also, there's a selvage on this fabric that is where the design has is no longer being printed. So it's, it's literally just all velvet. So I decided that I'd cut the straps all velvet. So I, I did my two little straps, and they're all velvet, and that's where we're going to start. So we're going to take them, and we're just going to do a fold and a fold, and we're going to top stitch. Okay, and that's all on the machine, and you can, you know, do it a million. I'm sure there's so many different ways you guys can do this, but um, I did have a lady make this in a class, and she said she wanted wider straps. And she did, but you've got to be careful because... Um, if you make them too wide, then the cow it doesn't bring in the cow like it's supposed to. So the the narrower straps uh, are meant to pull the cow in. And if they're too wide, they don't pull the cow up as much. All right. So there's one strap, and I'll press that just so you guys can see how this velvet presses. I realized I haven't been pressed so far. And I did use the selvage on this, so I'm just putting the selvage right on top. Very easy to do. I did that again. I'm running over my own thread. I'm not sure why I'm doing that today. But See, that's why it's not progressing forward. That's why it's acting for me. Just put it out of there. Sewing lesson number 101. Put your thread to the back. Always put your thread to the back. So sometimes, like this is velvet, it's got a pile to it. So make sure that when you cut out your pieces, all of your pieces are being placed the same direction. Um, look at the fabric before you cut it. And there'll be, you know, one way it'll look darker than the other way. So when I did it, I made sure that my, not on the straps, but it's a matter of turning it like this versus turning it like this. You know, one, one way will be darker. Typically, you want the darker down. That's how you want it. Okay. So then the next thing we're going to do on the guide sheet is we're going to take the top. We're going to take the back. Back is piece number six. And I'm going to surge along the edge. And I will say, you guys, most of the time I'm surging. It's just decorative. It doesn't need to be done. It's not like it's a knit. You could, you could easily make this tank without the surged edge because I'm going to fold this under now and I'm going to top stitch. However, before I fold it under top stitch, I'm going to put in my, my elastic. Okay, that's my other strap. So I'm going to put in my elastic. My back of the size I'm using 
if I measure the width of this back, it measures 18 inches. I want my elastic of that 18, I put it 16. You can make a 15, but I have found as I've made them for myself, you don't need them to be tight in the back. It's not like they don't, they'll move. So I decided I'd make mine 16. So I cut my elastic 16. This is my two inch elastic. And then I'm just gonna cut this a quarter inch because that's all I need it to be is quarter inch. And this two inch wide elastic, you can trim to any width you want. And just make sure that you cut in between the ribs and that way it won't pull out. If you cross the rib, you'll have some of the elastic kind of pop out on you, which is not gonna hurt it. But just when I cut it, I make sure I stay in the little, it has little cut lines for you. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is put this inside and you're gonna stitch it in place. So I'm gonna start here, anchor it in, and then I'm just gonna pull it all the way to the side and roll it over. So I can't say I'm stitching through the elastic, but I'm, I'm definitely stitching on the edge of the elastic. And then just with your hand, make sure you're moving it along because it's, it's got tension on it. So it's going to not move unless you kind of make sure it's moving. And then make sure it doesn't come out. So you're finishing the edge. You're inserting the elastic at the same time. And so when you finish, you have like a little, it's got just a little gather to it. And again, I have found that when I do this, I don't need that much gather. If your back is smaller, you know, you may find that you have to do undo it and do it again. But you'll see there's just a little tension to that. I'll show you on the inside. You can see that's where the gathers are, okay? If I lay it down, I guess you can really see it. Because you can see where it buckles up a little bit. Does the pattern say cut the front on bias? Or did that, did was that this? <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I know you type fast and I'm reading this going, huh? No, the, the, the pattern does not say cut on a bias. It will cowl without a bias. I just decided because um, of the pattern on the knit that I thought a bias would be a little more, a little softer looking, the appearance. It will it'll still cowl. It doesn't matter what it is, it will cowl. Would adding length to, length to the front and back for a longer look work for this? Yeah, you just gotta make sure as you add length that you, you know, watch out for your changing circumferences of your body, okay? Other than that, you're good to go. Okay, so on this back piece, and I didn't mark it, because it's just to me is easy to go back, there is a, I'll put it upwards so you can see it, there is a, a dot, a notch, a mark, whatever you want to call it, and you can figure out which size belongs to you. And you're going to want to, that's where you're going to sew the strap in place. With it ungathered, okay? So don't gather it and then do it, it's ungathered. I don't ever mark it in the beginning because by the time you put the elastic, you've kind of wiped that out anyway. So there's your, those are your two marks, and that's where you're going to put your straps in play. So I'm going to just take it like this, put the strap right on top, and just stitch it kind of once, stitch it back stitch. Probably should be taking that pin out of there. There's nothing magic, just secure the strap to the back. Trim all your threads up, and you're good to go. Okay, easy enough. One strap there, one strap here. I'll tell you, I don't know why, I just love to sew. Can I tell you that? Should I tell you that now or just keep it a secret? I just really enjoy the process. And I'll usually go once forward, once back, again. Definitely nothing magic here. 
right, so my back is pretty much finished. My back is finished. There's no pretty much. Sorry, about that. my back is finished. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go to the next column. Oh, sorry. I was already on the next column when I added those straps in. Sorry about that. At the top of the next column, you see that's where you add the straps in. Yep. Okay, now we're going to go to the front. And all we're going to do is fold it right sides together. You can look at the long front piece here. So the longer portion, you'll see that what the pattern does is it kind of repeats itself. This is the armhole. So that portion right there is where you're going to fold it. It definitely helps to understand the pattern. And you are going to clip. There's like a dot. And that is in about 3 eighths of an inch. And I'll show you why here in a minute. I'm going to put a little pin there to hold it so that I don't have to keep folding it correctly. So you're going to fold it on the fold line. It's marked on the tissue. And I'm going to put a little clip right there. A little pin. Okay, so... Oh, my pin just came out. Sorry about that. Would adding length to the front... Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I answered that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so you're gonna sew it right sides together, but it will flip around and go like this, and then the back comes in. So we drew this very carefully to show you how you put the back underneath. So what you're gonna do is like just lay this on the table And the back goes up. And this little strap, this goes in between here. And it's going to go into this cut, little cut edge. Okay, so that's the whole reason that you did that. It's going to go in there. And this is why I was saying, if the strap is too wide, then it doesn't have enough to pull together. It doesn't work as well. So I'm going to pull this strap up here. And then you've got your pins in place. I would just recommend that just flip it and make sure you're doing it right at this point. You know, you can, we did the drawing right, but see how it's going to work? It's all good. The, the straps are going to come together to make the cowl. And you've got the right side on the right side. If you look at the drawing, it's right. But sometimes even if you look at the drawing, it can be confusing. So I'm gonna, I put a pin in there just to make sure it's right. So now what I'm gonna do is come back and you can see that you're just stitching that little angle there. It's basically you're covering up the section you cut. And you're securing a strap in there at the same time. So boom, I'm going to cut it at an angle. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You know, when I, this is, um, the wrap itself, there were two different designers I put these together. But the wrap itself, or no, not the wrap, I'm sorry, the cowl tank is Bailey 44, which is why I called it Bailey's. This little cowl thing is like $150. It's so expensive, it's crazy. And especially when you realize how beautiful you're gonna see it fits and how easy it is to make. Okay, so then, then you're gonna move the strap out of the way. You're gonna overstitch this right here. And just, you're stitching the armhole right here. So that portion right here is the armhole. And you're going to leave it right sides together when you're doing that. When doing the cow top, would you do a sway back adjustment? Same on 195. Um, yes and no. 
the cowl top is not as close to the body as what your this cowl top. Remember, it's a cowl, and it's not made for just knits. It can be woven, so it isn't a garment that is really, really tight against your body, and so it's less likely that a sway back will show up. So while it can be done in knit, but it can also be done in woven, and it, it's just not really tight. Sway backs typically only show up on a knit garment. I mean, not always. They show up on wovens too, but it's usually when a garment gets closer to the body. So I don't think I would automatically put it in there. It's your call. Okay. So I've got those two armholes sewn. Oh, I forgot to take you to the next page. I'm sorry. Take it to the last page of the guide sheet, you guys. Sorry about that. And so you can pull out the straps there. You can see that armhole is really pretty. Now it's possible, because I made this like really nice and tight against your armhole, it's possible you might have to make that armhole a little bit larger. If, you're, if your arms are, say, a little bit bigger, but you just stitch them down farther. Not hard at all. It just won't make a difference. I wouldn't do it in the first place. I'd do it just like it is, and I'm just pulling these to the outside and putting a little pin in here. And then we're going to do the side seams. So the underarms are all done and sewn, and we're going to create do the side seams. Hey Peggy, is 42.18 the knit sheath dress the same base as Giorgio's top? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to come and do these right sides together, and I'm going to do it on the serger. Your underarm is finished, and your back seam is finished. Those are both finished. So again, we're putting things together. And when you do this, you want to include your little fold over portion. Now I have not surged that. It doesn't have to be surged because it's on the inside, but I think just to be consistent, I would surge it. Don't hem it. You don't want the bulk of what it presents on the inside. So now I'm ready to do the side seam. And again, be sure you you include your little the little fold over portion and then don't get that strap twisted. Be careful to make sure your strap is straight. Okay, so again, you're starting at the top because everything has been stitched. So raise up your foot, push it in. To the needle so that it takes it evenly and then kind of look ahead your side seams will match and then your side your fold part will go ahead. all right that's one and we'll do it again for the other side I don't know if any of y'all noticed there is not a dart that we stitched today. Did y'all notice that? Not one dart have we stitched today. I think somebody ought to give me, I don't know, like all the darts are built in. In the cowl neck, the dart is built into the cowl. So you don't have to worry about it. And I hopefully you guys have made this because it's just beautiful. It fits really lovely. And again, just be careful to get that little folded layer in. And I want to get those fabrics up today. So this is cool. What, how are we doing on time? Is it just 3 o'clock? We've done all this in an hour? Yeah. Really? We've made both of them in an hour, you guys? Is this cool? Okay, so here it is. Um, I'm not going to finish the bottom because there's really no big reason to. Is that pretty? It's so beautiful. It's so cute. I just love it. There's the back. It's adorable. It's just the cutest little top. 
And again, you guys, it doesn't matter if you don't wear sleeveless and don't wear tanks and all that. They're gr it's great underneath something. It's a beautiful way to show off anything. You know, even the, the top that you're wearing with it. All right, let's answer questions. Do I remember you saying your patterns are designed for someone 5'8"? Yes, our fit model. We hire a fit model, and our fit model is 5'8". So that's the length we use. Correct. All right, what else, you guys? If I made both of these pieces in an hour while I was talking, that's good. That's hopeful, right, you guys? <laughs> if I make it in a woven, should I size up? No. Let me say that again. The fabric, the pattern itself is not made for a knit or a woven. So let me explain that a little bit more just so that you kind of understand that. If, if you're talking about the wrap itself, there's no negative ease. So it doesn't matter if it's knit or woven. If you're talking about the cowl tank, it's a cowl. You don't want negative ease in a cowl because it won't cowl. So there's no reason for you to change size for knit or woven. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you don't need to alter sizing for your fabric in this particular case. Okay. How do you make sure the strap is the correct length? One of my shoulders is shorter than the other. Okay, good question. Um, make it. Don't make any adjustments to it. Because I promise, guys, this is not my first rodeo. I know where your bust points are. I know where your shoulder blades are. I know all of that information. Make it just like it is. This is not just a strap. A strap is built into the entire front, so it's not like a bra strap where it's going to fall off. Make it. If there's an issue, obviously shorten a strap. And you could shorten it easy enough after it was made, come back to where it's sewn on, and instead of sewing that on, just pin it in place. And that way you don't even have to take out the sewing. Because I've made it before and I know the strap's right, I went ahead and sewed it. But if you're not sure, just pin it in place and then put it on and then, you know, go from there. Okay? But good question. But I think a lot of times we think we, well, you guys know. <laughs> you know, we think that we're more different. But because this is not just a strap, it's a top that has a strap on it. The top portion will hold that strap in place. Okay. You mentioned in a previous webcast that you'd be getting lightweight separating zippers in. When's that going to happen? They're in. I'm sorry. See, see, you guys, there's two there's two separate things. One is getting them in, one is getting them online. Okay, so I have them in and they're beautiful. I don't have them online. How about if I put them up with the fabric, but I will put them up under the fabric page, which is not where they're supposed to go. I keep getting screamed at by my, the people I pay because I'm not doing things the way I'm supposed to do things. And they're getting all upset with me. And they're working behind the scenes and they're trying to figure it all out and straighten it out. And then I keep messing it up because I get in a hurry and I just throw it up on the fabrics page and that's not where it should be. So we've almost got all of the notions taken away from where <laughs> the fabrics page. Behind the scenes, they're fixing it all. And so when I go do something like that, they get really kind of pissed off at me. But anyway, if you don't tell them, I'll go ahead and put up the separating zippers and I'll put them up on the fabrics page. Okay. <laughs> They'll make no sense except for those of you who watch the webcast. How should I choose the size based on the blouse that I like? Um, I would use the tank top. It's a tank top is what it is. Go by the tank top. And I'm pretty sure the numbers on the back are pretty close to the tank top. Couldn't swear by that. I don't remember. I did the pattern like a year ago. You guys. The cow neck. Yeah, no, the cow neck. Yeah. yeah. The wrap itself go by the numbers, just how loose you want it. Because I could probably wear one of three sizes. But for the wrap, for the tank itself, go by your tank top size. Just measure your bust. Um, or measure a tank top you wear and make it that size. Okay, does that help? I won't tell you. Behind the scenes, we always have all kinds of fun things going on. I'm supposed to try to keep a straight face while they're going on. Are you okay? <laughs> okay. Um, could you sew bra cups into it? Yeah, absolutely you could. Absolutely. That's 
why there's two layers, I think, simply. But let me just say something to that. It, this is not tight enough that it would support you like a bra. So this is not, you know, tight. It's, it's a cowl. So I'm going to reverse that answer here for a second. Would I sew bra cups into it? No. Because they would have to be secure in and the top isn't that secure. I hope I'm getting somewhere. Does that make sense? This is a cowl tank. So the cowl tank shouldn't be like tight like a sports bra. Okay, I guess that's, I think I've said it better that time. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Any other questions, you guys? We get to selling. Our Black Friday, all of our stuff is, going, is on, our elastic's on sale. Where's our elastic? Our two inch wide elastic, what a good price. Our needles are on sale. You can break as many needles as you want. These needles are really well priced. Our thread. We've got Guterman threaded now. It's a new black and white, except it's already sold out. But even if you order it, you'll get the sale price, and then we'll ship it when we get it in. But not, all the prices are good until Thursday night. And then what else is on sale? I don't remember. But anyway, <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. We're starting, and then we have Black Friday 1, 2, and 3. This is going to be fun this year. All right, so you guys, you got it? Yay! That was fun. That was really fun. I have a new top. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Very pretty. All right, then we're going to see you next Saturday. We are going to have a sew along. And we are going to have a sew along because we're trying to encourage you all to stay home and stay healthy. And if you can find stuff to do and sew and enjoy what you're doing, then maybe we're more likely to stay home and get rid of this silly virus. Jeez Louise. All right, so next Saturday what we're going to do is we're going to sew the blouse. A 720 Sherrard's blouse. That blouse is just beautiful, and I really want to do it because it's so simple. It's so simple. So next Saturday, 2 o'clock, we're going to do this again, and we'll sew the blouse. All right? Oh, just to clarify, uh, we can use woven fabric and still pick the size based on our knit tank sizing. Close, but no. <laughs> so that's a personal question. Let me try to explain real quick. When I make a tank top, my knit tank and my woven tank are no different. I don't have a knit tank like so close to my body that it's a negative ease. I use the knit, so it depends on how you have your knit tank fit. If you have your knit tank like a shelf bra, no, it's not gonna work. But if you'll measure the cowl tank so that it fits like a woven tank, that's all you can do. You can't have it fit like a knit tank because it's not that tight. It, it won't cowl if it gets too tight. Or it doesn't look right if you have a cowl neck and then this you know, sports bra underneath it. It's, it's kind of an oxymoron. Does that make sense? All right, so choose it by your tank top but not your knit tank if there's a difference between the two. Boy, it's amazing how words can be confusing. I right, hope that clarifies. Um, can I use your needles on my serger? Yes, yes. The needles we sell are just a 7010. They have the flat back. I use them on everything. I use them on my sewing machine and my sergers. Yep. And they're really good price. You guys pay at the stores like a dollar a needle. These are 100 needles for... How much are they on sale? Let me think. $25, I think. So if I do the math, that's a quarter a needle. You could break four needles for every one that you buy at the store. I mean, that's the big difference that it is when you're paying for them, you know, at the little, the little package. They're just so expensive that we're spending a lot of money we don't need to. All right. I'm new to garment making. Any suggestions on which pattern to start? I'm not afraid to get out of my comfort zone. Good. I would still start with a yoga pant. It's on, it fits amazing. It, uh, it's on, it's our POM. It's our pattern of the month, the yoga pant, 3,400. And it's a home run. You know, it'll just, it's fun to make it on the, sur on the serger. You can do the whole thing in 20 minutes, you know, I hate to say time, 30 minutes, an hour, we'll say an hour. 
uh, make a little cowl and, and this to go with it. And you know, I mean, you can look amazing in just a few minutes and very inexpensively compared to what they are in the store, okay? Can you put the tank on under the wrap you just made? Um, well, yes and no, because whenever you do this, you guys, whenever I do these mannequins, uh, they're, you know, they're hanging. So let's put it on this one. Let's put it on this one. I'll take this off. Because in other words, I have to completely uh, take that off its hang to get the tank on. I didn't the wrap because I could just put it on, but let's do this. All right, so here's the tank. Just kind of position that to where it's right. And the straps are not twisted. So, so you can see what that does is that pulls it in. This is what I was saying to you. This is kind of loose down here. Okay, the cowl is here. The straps, if you make them too wide, they won't be able to pull in. That's what I was talking there. And then just make sure underneath here that this portion is down. Because you can see it comes down well below the bust. It's just like a liner to the cowl. Alright, and then we'll take this off here. And we'll put it, let's put an arm on. There we go. And now we'll put this little wrap on. All right, there you go. Isn't that beautiful? You've got the wrap there. You've got your little side panel. So when you talk about making them longer, and there's certainly nothing wrong with making them longer, um, but, you know, keep in mind that they were proportioned to go together. So obviously just kind of keep that in mind because I think I love the look and how they look together. But, you know, they're all, you guys know my saying, they're your clothes, you get to do whatever you want. But I just think that's so pretty. And then just a pair of black slacks or black leggings or, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Would you still make a practice one first? I mean, I think it depends on how much your fabric costs, how much you love it. <laughs> you know, I find that as I've gone to fitting workshops and I have fit them on women, they fit very well. But uh, yeah, I mean, you saw how long it took me. Just get some scrap fabric, you know, use that muslin that we sell, it's cheap, and just make one up. I, I think I would. I think there's a I never know what you guys know and what you don't know. So a lot of times I know what I know and so I think, oh, you don't need to do that. But then you comes along and you don't know something that I knew and it doesn't work the same. So I think I would make a, I, I don't think the wrap you need to, that is so beautiful and soft and it just has great hang to it and great drape. But I think when it comes to the, to the little cowl, I think I would inside. Okay, easy enough. All right, we're out of here. We're going to go get some fabrics up. All right, so thanks for joining us, you guys. I, I really do enjoy these sew alongs. Um, I appreciate you all being here, and we can bring a little bit of joy to each other's lives. That's always a good thing. And so we'll see you next Saturday. All right, thanks for watching. Happy sewing. Bye.